And I think we'll get started so that we can be respectful of everyone's time. So this is the Get Started with Walk-Up Experience live on ServiceNow. And uh, before we get started, um, this is our safe harbor notice. If we do talk about anything forward facing, we just wanna put this here. Um, this is what we believe is going to come out with a uh, walk-up experience, but um, just keep this in mind that some things may change. A few housekeeping, this is a virtual round table. So we hope to have a really good uh, live conversation, but please stay on mute. And if you do have any questions, we'll actually ask you to put them in the chat or use the Q&A uh, feature of the Zoom, but please make it as interactive if you have something come up. Um, we can also do FAQs at the end where people can come off of mute. Um, introduce yourself when you're asking um, questions in the chat. You can say you know, what your role is or, or what you're um, responsible for. And then this session is being recorded. So moving forward, um, if you are interested in any more live on um, ServiceNow, we have more webinars and more meetups. So we will drop the link for that in um, the chat as well. So you can register for more interactive and amazing events that we host. Uh, so before we get started, we'll just do a quick little introduction. I'll just jump into my introduction since I'm already speaking. My name is Isabella. I'm a senior product manager specifically for um, servers for ITSM and focused on different products, including Waka. So I will let the others that are here with us introduce themselves. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Harsh Maliwal, and I'm the inbound product manager for the Waka Experience product line uh, within ServiceNow. I'll hand it over to Bala. Hey, hi everyone, this is Bala. I'm a principal outbound product manager, uh, primarily focusing on uh, ITSM products. Yeah, over to you, Salman. Hello everyone, I'm Salman. I'm uh, taking care of all the quality for the walk up and I'll be assisting today, Hush, in the session. Thanks over everyone. Today. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to get started. And we first want to get started off by asking a few poll questions. So this will ask two questions if we can um, launch the poll, please. And uh, the first question is, where are you on your walk up experience journey? Are you brand new to walk up experience? Are you currently evaluating and or adding it to your roadmap? or are you already using walk-up experience? This will just help us get a gauge of where everyone is so we can tailor the conversation towards the, uh, the majority of our audience. Right now it's looking pretty split. So there's about 48% brand new to walk-up experience, about 40% currently evaluating, that just dropped to 38, and 15% already using. So we'll love to hear from those that are already using walk-up experience to really hear more about your, um, your experience using the product. Uh, so I'll just wait a couple more seconds. There you go. And um, to round that out, it was a total of 48% brand new to walk-up experience. 37 currently evaluating or adding it to the roadmap, and then 15% already using it. So that's a really good indication of where we're at. And then the other poll question, if we can launch, launch it, poll question number one, is which bet option best describes your role in, this organize, in your organization? Are you a developer, help desk agent, uh, process owner, product owner? If you don't mind throwing that in there, again, this just helps us level set where everyone is so we can tailor this conversation specifically towards those that are, are joining us today. And we'll just leave it open for another 20 seconds maybe. And then I will read off the answers. Okay, I think we have about everyone answer. I'll just wait a couple more seconds in case okay i think that's all so we'll end that poll and um, just to share out the results we have about 45 percent of you on here are service now developers so that's the majority and then from there uh, 24 percent are service or process owners uh 21 percent product owners and then 10 percent help desk agents so this is great for us to hear so we can tailor the conversation when we get into the demo to harsh can talk a little bit more 
about um, the different parts of walk up but to get started i just wanted to share a little bit more about the experience from the end user and then from the admin as well so first we'll start with the uh, end user so from the end user experience they can expect fast in-person guidance via the conventional walk-up experience and virtual collaboration which is really important in this remote walk-up world that we're living in and we can support requesters who are working remotely to book their appointments through the new remote booking type and requesters can get served virtually by their agents through microsoft teams so we're really supporting this fast in-person guidance through you know, in-person help or virtual collaboration as well. And then we also have this idea of flexible scheduling. So appointments can be booked via the service portal and now mobile apps. Users can take control of their schedule and make sure that they are getting serviced at the time that is most convenient for them. And this is really that modern experience that end users are accustomed to. Um, additionally, we have the simple check-in from anywhere kind of experience that end users can expect from walk-up. So this simple and easy check-in from anywhere experience using the employee service center portal, service portal, or now mobile app. Uh, end users can check in to their appointments or drop by the walk-up experience. When they drop in, they can easily see what the wait time is and the position they are in the queue, uh, providing really clear transparency. Again, we'll see a lot of this in the demo. I just kind of want to set the stage for what and users can expect, especially for those that are evaluating uh, walk up experience for their organization. That's a quick and dirty kind of explanation. I'll pause there to see if there's any chat questions um, or anything in the Q&A function. I think we're good for now. Uh, just give it a moment, double check. I think we're good. So I will keep moving forward. So uh, the experience for admins. What does this look like? So quick setup, flexible scheduling, transparent insight. For quick setup, we provided a guided setup experience for walk-up that makes it easy, simple, and quick for admins to get up and running with our product. We really want to remove any barriers that you might be experiencing so that you can implement this as quickly as possible and start helping your employees and helping your agents get to the work that they need to do. Flexible scheduling, we've optimized the efficiency for walk-up locations by introducing variable time slots for appointment booking. These variable time slots for appointment booking can be configured and booked based on the check-in reason. So for example, if you are you know, upgrading your laptop versus picking up a charger or something like that. Those are very two different appointments. So having that variable time slot for the appointment is really key. This feature help provides important information to the customers about the availability of the agents for a location and also manage the walk-up location more effectively and efficiently for the agents. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, a laptop could be 15 minutes, but a refresh could take up to an hour. So the last part is transparent insight. So admins have a clear and transparent view into the information about their walk-up performance and satisfaction. Admins have the, uh, we have the out of the box dashboard for admin, admins that detail the walk-ups in any given time period, exit CSAT survey for the year, overall CSAT for the walk-up location in particular. And for those that have multiple walk-up locations, it's really important to be able to distinct which ones are performing well, where they're performing well, and how you can improve that. So this is just a number of the um, options out of the box for these dashboards that you have to really give that bird's eye view and that insight into how your walk-up location is performing. Again, I'm going to pause here to see if there's any questions that we want to answer live and just hold space in case um, you are still typing in a question. Let's see. Yep, the guided setup is bundled into the product itself. Uh, is variable time slots for appointment booking available today? Yes, it is. I believe it was available as of the San Diego or Tokyo release. Thank you. So for those of you that are looking for that, that upgrade to Tokyo will be your best bet to get the variable time slots. Awesome. I'm going to keep moving forward. Keep us on time. 
Okay, some best practices and guidance uh, for those of you that are new evaluating or already working on ServiceNow's walk-up experience. These are some best, best practices and tips that we have for you. Meet users where they are. You can meet users where they are by servicing capabilities to them via the ServiceNow portal and the Now mobile app. Those are really powerful platforms for them to use, especially because they may already be in them, especially that Now mobile app. Create seamless integration, so better manage your walk-up queues, stock room, and appointments. Manage your walk-up interactions and queues in the service operations workspace. As a walk-up agent, you can get to use service operations workspace to manage your assigned walk-up interactions. You can open incidents when an issue is not resolved by the walk-up location. You can also directly create a request for hardware or software through the service catalog when an asset is not available at the walk-up location in that stock room. Uh, directly initiate Teams conversations within the service operations workspace as well, so to better uh, service your employees. And then lastly, support agents. Increase servicing efficiency at locations by setting up multiple kiosks for different types of issues to serve requesters simultaneously. Define skill requirements for any services offered at the walk-up location. Assign skills to agents to enable automated skill-based routing. Enhance check-in experience of the requesters at a location with improved badge, badge reader integration. And uh, now that I've gone through all these best practices and guidance, let's see it real time. And I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Harsh. Awesome. Thanks, Dan Isabella. Uh, thanks for setting that up. Hello, everyone. So Isabella has done a really great job of running you through the, the what and the why, but we'd like to show you a little bit of a hands-on around some of the capabilities that she's spoken about. Now, given that our poll has showed that quite a few of you are new to this space, I'd like to spend some time just walking you through some of the basic user journeys. And then we'll talk about some of the new capabilities that Isabella has touched on, like the variable time slots feature. We're also gonna try and get uh, what we like to consider a really cool capability around something we call skill-based routing. Uh, hopefully if time permits, we'll get to the demo over there. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I wanna take a minute to explain the screen that you see in front of you. So this is what we call the employee center or the employee portal. And this is the out of box portal that we ship from our San Diego release onwards. And it's our kind of reimagined interpretation of the employee journey. Now, this is designed with, first of all, an updated theme. For those of you who've seen our older service portals, they're using the older kind of Madrid themes, the La Jolla themes. This has a new theming concept, but more importantly, the stylistic layout of the page is more structured to gear towards employee productivity. Now, Walkup resides as a first class citizen on this page. So if you come over here, you quickly see a section called My Active Items, which is supposed to give you a bird's eye view of things that need your attention. Excuse me. Now, we've kept Walkup over here because we feel it's very important for employees to quickly be able to get in-person help, or even if they're remote, uh, getting help from a specific agent. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly click on walk up visits. Now, as you can see, I don't have any upcoming walk up visits planned. So I'm just going to go ahead and click plan my visit. And you can see that I'm in the San Diego tech lounge. I have the ability to change my location if I so desire. Now, I wanna explain a couple of different things that you see on the screen over here. There are two tabs that are visible to you currently. The first tab is for joining a queue. The second tab is for scheduling an appointment. When you choose to join the queue, what you're saying is that you need in-person assistance right now. When you choose to schedule an appointment, you are choosing to go for in-person assistance at some later time or some later date. Now you have the complete flexibility as a ServiceNow admin to configure your queues in whichever manner you so desire to support. You can choose to offer your walk-up locations with only in-person immediate assistance. You can choose to configure them allowing only for scheduling an appointment, or you can choose a hybrid format like you see over here. 
Now we at ServiceNow actually use this hybrid format, which is why I've just gone ahead and kept it as you see over here. Now, if I go ahead and decide to select a reason, I can see that this is configured to offer me uh, several different reasons. I'm just gonna go ahead and select laptop issues. And now I'm just going to click check in. Just like that, I've been checked into a queue. Now there are a couple of different things that you need to notice here, which are important. The most important thing over here that you see is related content. Now this is a configurable widget that we ship because we believe in service now that we would like our customers to optimize as much as they can for deflection. And what we mean by deflection is we would like in-person agent interactions to be the last line of defense wherever possible. Now it's totally plausible that the user who's coming in to check into the queue for an issue may not have been able to find a catalog item or a helpful KB. And that's why they had to go directly to the agent to try and get the help they need. So the related content widget will actually allow you to surface up those recommendations that could add that 1% extra probability that the user is gonna find the help that they need on their own. thus making yourself serve implementation that much better. Other than that, on this page, what you also see is a queue status. The queue status allows you to quickly monitor who is being served, where they're being served, and who's up next. There's one more thing that you see over here called the kiosk, and that's something we'll get to uh, in the next part of the demo. You also have a widget over here, which shows you the hours of operation of this location. Now, that's if you want in-person help immediately. Perhaps you've actually come to the walk-up location and you've seen that there are a lot of people in the queue and your issue is not absolutely pressing. So you wanna come back later, but you want to ensure that you get a time slot of your choosing so that you get the service and the help that you need. So what you could do in such a case is you could actually go ahead and schedule an appointment. Now, when you go to schedule an appointment, you actually have the ability to schedule just for yourself or on behalf of someone else. What you see over here is a similar kind of experience to the in-person queue, but the key differences are you have the ability to schedule on behalf of someone else, you have the ability to select a slot, and you also have the ability to choose an appointment type. The appointment types that you see here are also configurable. You can choose to have a walk-up location that supports in-person only, remote only, or a combination of in-person and remote. Now, an important point that I would like to make over here is that a remote walk-up means that the user who's actually requesting that appointment is not going to come into a physical tech lounge location. As of right now, we do not support agents assisting remote walk-ups remotely, but it is totally possible to achieve such a use case. So in this case, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to select the laptop issue Now I'm just going to go ahead and select an appointment. And you can see that this interface is actually giving me a little bit of information. I can see that these two slots are grayed out, which means that appointments are no longer available. And I can see that there are a variety of slots alternatively available to me. So I'm just going to go ahead, click on next. I'm going to select this slot and then I'm going to hit select. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click schedule appointment. Just like that, the appointment has been scheduled. From here, I can actually go ahead and download the ICS file that will add this automatically to my iCalendar. Now this, this concludes the first part of our demo. So what we saw here is an experience from the employee portal where an employee can quickly come in, check into a location and get the help they need. Alternatively, they have the ability to choose an appointment if they don't want immediate in-person help. Within an appointment, they can choose to either opt for in-person appointment help or they can go for remote help. This functionality is also surfaced via something we call the on-site portal it's possible that you want your users to actually come into a physical location and fill out this form over there itself. 
and the on-site portal is something you get out of box and it supports all of these functionalities. We also have the ability to configure these options from within our ServiceNow Now Mobile app. So if your organization is using our Now Mobile capabilities, your users can avail the walk-up features there as well. That makes it easy for them to get the help that they need on the go. I'm gonna take 30 seconds to pause here before I get into the next part of the demo. We've had a couple questions in um, the Q&A, but I think Salma has been answering most of them. So I think we're good to keep going. Sounds good. All right, so now we're gonna to come to the next part of the demo, which is a discussion around variable time slots. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna refresh the screen and then show you the essence of what variable time slots is. Now, earlier when Isabella was talking, she explained a use case where you may be deciding to come into a tech lounge for some, for some laptop related help one day, but the next day you might need mobile related help, or you may be having a VPN issue. Now, when we were doing our product research and speaking to different customers, what we actually were able to identify is there's a need to be able to optimally utilize the agent's time. And a part of that time is ensuring that scheduling of appointments is done very appropriately. <clears throat> a lot of our customers were facing this issue where the slots that they were offering for appointment booking were either being overutilized or underutilized. For example, they may have offered a 30 minute slot for a mobile issue, whereas a mobile issue actually took one hour. Or they may have been offering a 30 minute slot for an Outlook issue, whereas an Outlook issue actually took maybe only 10 minutes. What variable time slotting allows you to do is it allows you to define different kinds of appointment schemas based on the nature of the reason selected. It's completely configuration driven and actually taps into our platform's appointment booking capability. If you've not had a chance to check out appointment booking, we would definitely recommend that you do so because it's a very powerful capability and could become a game changer in terms of how you leverage your service desk productivity. Now, what I'm going to do in this case is, I'm going to go to schedule an appointment again. And one nuance I wanna point out for those of you who are already using WalkUp is pre-San Diego, we had a bug in the product that actually did not allow you to schedule multiple appointments. In the San Diego release, we actually fixed that. So now you can schedule multiple appointments without having to wait for the appointment to elapse. Now let's take a look at this use case over here. I'm going to go ahead and select laptop issues as my reason for visit. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the appointment picker has come. Let me just go ahead and open it. And I'm just gonna to go to next week to make this visually emphatic. And I can see couple of different slots. So the slots that I can see are Monday to Friday between 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. I can also see that there's a one and a half hour break between each of the slots on each of the days. Now, the reason I'm seeing that break is because the admin who's configured this location has actually factored in something that we call a daily break. That can be for any reason that you so desire. And again, the nature of that slot is configurable. Now, just to demonstrate the power of this capability, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the reason that I'm looking for service. And I'm going to go to mobile issues. Now, let me just click on the appointment picker again. Let me change this. Okay. Now, if you notice the nature of the slots that you see over here are different. For mobile issues, what you can see is I have four days available for service as opposed to five. I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, but I have no slots available to book on Thursday. Furthermore, the slots on Monday start from 12 p.m. and range all the way up till 8 p.m 
with that break no longer factored in. Just to drive home the point, I'm going to change to the last issue type, which is VPN issues. Now, VPN issues are configured to work totally differently yet again. If you see over here, Sunday to Tuesday are not available for booking. Only Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are. And on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I only have booking times available from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. This, in a nutshell, is the variable time slot capability. Now, why this is important is because it allows you to at a granular level, control how many appointments and at what duration you want to set for a particular service. If you have actually reached that business process maturity where you know how much average time each kind of service request is taking you, you can actually now plan more optimally and ensure that not only is your agent's capacity more optimally utilized, but also that your end users get an accurate estimation of the time that they will need to spend at your tech lounge. I'll take a few seconds to pause here before I move into the next part of the demo. I think we have one other question um, in the QA. May I know where all these configurations are at back end for the appointments based on the category? So I think we'll go through that as well. Uh, yeah, we won't be going through the configurations in this demo, but we'll try and uh, have you have it answered uh, while I'm going through the rest of the demo. Yeah. Okay, so we have spent a little bit of time talking about the end user experience for your employee, but a large component of the walk-up product is also on the agent side. Now on the agent side, we have this capability known as skill-based routing. Skill-based routing is actually an intelligent system that will auto-assign incoming walk-up tickets based on a skill association that's made. What this requires you to do is at the agent's user profile, you actually have to assign the agent some set of skills. Once you have done that, you actually go into the walk-up configurations and for each reason that's specified, you tie a skill to it. So what we're going to do is, we're going to actually join the queue and impersonate a user who has a specific skill. And we're gonna see that the ticket that's created is going to get automatically assigned into that agent's queue. And the agent is going to have the ability to directly work on it. This kind of processing is important because it saves a lot of time but more importantly, it ensures that there's an optimal matching between the skill that the ticket requires and the skill that the agent possesses. So what I'm going to do is in my tab over here, I'm going to quickly impersonate one of the agents that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and impersonate Abel. And Abel has what we call a skill on mobile issues. So anytime a ticket comes in related to mobile issues, if the configuration has been done properly, it will be preferentially routed to Abel. Now Abel is going to work on top of our service operations workspace. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what that looks like for those of you who have not already seen it. If you've not had a chance to check out our service operations product workspace, I would strongly recommend that you check it out because it's the future of how we imagine the agent persona to uh, interact with our products. So Abel is actually going to go into the service operations workspace and he's going to begin his day by setting his status to online. So I'm just gonna wait for his workspace to load. I'm gonna click on the inbox. And let me just, Close this pop-up and I'll change my status to available. 
Now available means that I have, I am ready to pick up work items as they come in. And I also have to do something called checking into a kiosk. A kiosk is like a designated sub sub desk of a walk-up location. You can configure your walk-up location to work with or without a kiosk. So the way a kiosk will work is you can actually use it as a kind of alias for the rest of your walk-up desk. So imagine you're running a, a large organization where your IT help desk is spread out over a large geographical location. You may need a way to be able to direct your users to the space that they need to get help. It's not gonna be practical for them to know that they have to go to an agent. But if you tell them that, okay, if you're looking for a laptop related issue, go to the laptop kiosk. Or if you're related, looking for a mobile issue, go to the mobile kiosk. And then you label the physical space of the kiosk. It becomes very easy for them to identify that, hey, this is where I need to go. Kiosk is an entirely optional configuration. You don't have to use it. And the skill-based routing capability will work even without that. But for this location, because kiosk seven been enabled, what I'm actually going to do as Abel is I'm going to check into the mobile kiosk. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hit check in. And I'm here. Now, because I'm checked into the mobile kiosk, I can't check into any other kiosks. If I try to check into the to any other kiosk, I will be checked out of this one and checked into that. But my manager has decided that I need to be working on the mobile kiosk. So I'm here, I'm good to go. Now I need a work item to come in. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch back to the employee persona. And over here, again, as Joe, I'm going to go ahead and check into the queue for mobile related issue. I click mobile issue. And now I'm just going to hit check in. And I hope you were able to hear this kind of haptic sound in the, in the background. So I'm just going to hit okay. And now if you see, I'm getting this kind of toast notification here. So let me click on this. And if you see, I've got a mobile issue ticket come in. Now, if I decide to go ahead and accept this, the work item will be assigned to me. The way skill-based routing works is you can actually configure conditions that allow you to decide whether or not this ticket should be automatically assigned. We've had customers tell us that as a part of their business process, they don't want agents to have the flexibility of picking up or rejecting a ticket. And the skill-based routing engine actually allows you to do that. And the beauty of skill-based routing is the moment you activate walk-up, you can get started with it. You do not need any additional licensing in order to use this capability. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to impersonate another user, check in with another issue and show you how the experience is different. So I'm gonna go over here. Let me impersonate another end user. Let's say I decide to impersonate Pablo. Excuse me. All right, not Pablo. Apologies, I forgot that Pablo is a Spanish speaking user. So I'm going to go ahead and impersonate, let's say myself. All right, now I'm gonna to go to walk up visit. I'm going to click on plan your visit. I'm going to select San Diego. All right. And now this time I'm not going to request a mobile issue. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to request help for a VPN issue. Now, 
I can already see that Joe's in the queue, but I'm going to go ahead and check it anyways. And now if you see, this time I did not get that haptic feedback, nor did I get a work ticket over here. And the reason for that is Abel has only been configured with the mobile issue skill. Now the way this location has been set up is the skill-based check is mandatory. Each of these skills has been marked as mandatory. What that means is if an incoming ticket has a particular skill requirement, unless that agent has that particular skill, they will not be allocated that work. Flexible configuration. You can choose as per your business process, whether or not you want to enforce that mandatory condition. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and impersonate Aileen. And Aileen is an agent who has the VPN skill, which is going to be required to work on this work ticket. So I go ahead, I impersonate Aileen. Just like last time, I come over here, I click on my inbox, I change my status to online. And now if you see, the VPN issues ticket has come in here. That, in a nutshell, is the skill-based routing capability. To recap what it allows you to do, it allows you to create a coupling between a reason for service and a skill that your agent possesses. When an interaction is created and a work item gets created for the agent to work on, the skill, the advanced work assignment engine actually does processing to see whether the agent has that skill or not. And based on the configurations that you've made, it will choose whether or not to give that agent the work item in their inbox. The idea behind this capability, once again, is to make it a more optimal service experience for your end user, as they get paired with an agent who will be best positioned to assist them. Additionally, it ensures that your agents can provide faster service as they receive only those work items that they're actually skilled to meet. Now that concludes the live demo part of this session. And with that, I'll hand it over to Isabella. Awesome, thank you, Harsh. I think there's maybe um, a question that we wanted to try to answer live. So I'll just um, read that over for you. Um, is there a tie into workspace, workspace service delivery where we can guide the employee to the kiosk or lounge location? If we don't have an answer to it too, we can um, take down an email and get back to you as well. So when you say guide the employee to the kiosk, do you mean actually like showing a kind of live map to, to the kiosk? Uh, I'll see if uh, Tim wants to maybe clarify in the yeah. chat a little more so detail. Tim, if you could just clarify that. So assuming that is what is assuming that is what you're looking for, Tim, that is one of the items on our future roadmap that we're trying to look into. It's not something that we've gotten to yet, but it is definitely a futuristic capability that we would be interested in offering. Awesome. Uh, if you do want to clarify more, oh, Workspace Delivery has a map navigation feature to guide users through the office. Yeah, and we haven't actually tied up with that out of box. Uh, but yeah, it is something that uh, we are hoping to have in our future roadmap. Awesome. So um, feel free to keep throwing any questions in the Q&A feature and we'll still be reading them. I'm just going to wrap us up a little bit here and then we can do live Q&A if we have the time and people still have questions. So we want to talk a little bit about the desired business outcomes with walk-up experience. Some things that are top of mind for us are increasing in-person help for issues, quicker turnaround time, and anticipating agent capacity and workload. So these are big for us. We're curious to know too 
which business outcomes speak to you most if you want to drop them in the chat so that we know which ones to focus on as we continue to innovate on walk-up experience. We're also curious to know what you would like to learn more about with walk-up experience and helping you achieve your desired business outcomes. We do more of these sessions and we'd love to know what information we need to put out there via you know, community or, or whatnot, more sessions, things like that. So if you want to drop in anything in the chat related to these two questions, and then finally, what are some of the challenges in achieving your desired business outcomes with walk-up experience that you're, you're going through that we can help you with? So I'll take a moment to pause here, maybe a minute or so to see if anyone um, has anything they want to add in the chat. And then we'll uh, keep moving forward a little bit. We'll just pause here. Again, this is an interactive conversation. So whatever you have that's coming top, to top of mind, we'd love to answer it. We'd love to discuss it a little bit more. And this is a safe space for you to have you know, access to our product managers. Okay, getting team members to use the tool and not just walk up expecting help. Yes, that is huge. And that's why we are you know, creating these features like scheduling and bringing them on now mobile to encourage you know, using the tool rather than just showing up, especially if there's not any capacity at the time. I don't know, Harsh, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, also interested in improving in-person experience. That's definitely important as well. A lot of organizations are moving back to either a hybrid model of remote and in-person work or requiring employees to come back in. So really making sure that experience when they come back in is, is in high quality and, and hopefully walk up experience with the features and um, functionality that we're coming out with really brings that to a higher level as well. Oh, yes, great point, Harsh, talking about VA topic support as well for those of you who plan to use VA capabilities. Uh, if you're on ITSM Pro, we do have some uh, walk-up experience capabilities via our virtual agent. I'll just wait for another minute or so, see if anyone else has any comments. Uh, we're interested in remote booking feature for laptop replacement configurations. Yeah, that's definitely, especially back to the whole remote work um, experience, like those are common use cases that you need to be able to resolve. So looking into that more is definitely top of mind. I don't know, Harsh, again, if you have any additional comments on that, but we definitely hear that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you touched on that, uh, Isabella. And one of the things that we're also additionally trying to do uh, in our upcoming releases is see if we can deliver a remote offering on the agent side as well. What we mean by that is we've heard from customers that they have configurations where the agent is actually not manned at a physical location. The agent also could be working virtually. So we are hopefully going to try and deliver some out-of-box capabilities in that area as well, if that's of interest to you. Great comments, Harsh there. Okay, so in the uh, interest of time giving, um, respecting everyone's time here, uh, we're gonna drop some resources in the chat so everyone has these links um, readily available. These are uh, Product Docs, Tokyo release notes for walk-up experience, um, advanced work assignment. I know there were some questions about advanced work assignment, service operations, we did go through that. So that's really important to share that information. Uh, employees, employee center as well for, you know, walk of experience and then ITSM virtual agent conversations as well. We mentioned that there's um, some capabilities on VA that allow you to engage with walk of experience as well or allow employees to. So we wanted to drop those in there as well. We've also added the deck and the webinar link as well. So you can find that there. And then before we wrap this up. Again, another plug for webinars and meetups so that you can register and join us for more sessions. And then finally, um, as we say thank you, if there's any additional questions uh, and, and you wanna come off mute and explain a little bit more, we're happy to um, stay on and chat further. Uh, we still have you know, a good amount of time. So also kudos Harsh for getting that demo in full uh, 
full, full length. And um, yeah, we'll be here for more questions. And also thank you to behind the scenes for everyone answering uh, questions on the ServiceNow side. So we'll be here if you have questions. If not, feel free to drop. Thank you so much for joining us for this walk-up uh, session. We'll be back again.